In today's episode, we'll talk about biblical demon possession. Demonic possession is a tormenting spiritual condition of a man's soul. It is caused by an absence of God's spirit due to a man's passion, love, or desire for sin, which attracts the presence of evil spirits. We'll talk about the first king of Israel. His name was Saul, and he was afflicted by an evil spirit. The prophet Samuel goes out to find a king to replace Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 and verses 13 through 15. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused Saul. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh at the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on his heart. Then Samuel took a horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Saul's servants advised Saul to seek a musician to play the harp for him as a treatment for evil spirits. David played the harp for Saul, and the troubling spirit temporarily ceased. Saul, David, and the Israeli army went out to battle with the Philistines. The women of Israel praised in the streets that Saul killed thousands, but David killed tens of thousands. This made Saul very jealous, and the evil spirit returned. Okay, so even though Samuel anointed David as king, David is still a very young man at this time. I'm going to guess that he's about 16. I'm not sure, but he's very talented. Uh, He keeps his father's flocks. He plays uh, the harp. So he's a very talented uh, young man with a lot of skills. And he's also very respectful. So even though he's been anointed as king, he's not going to take his uh, throne from Saul. So uh, David just waits, you know, he's like a king in waiting right now. And he respects Saul. He fights in Saul's army. He plays the harp for Saul. And, um, Saul is very jealous of this young man. Very, very jealous of this young man. But um, David just waits. And we'll see what happens. Jealousy is also a forbidden action in God's law to the people in the Ten Commandments. 
This jealous spirit is now a tormentor to Saul's soul. It is an old spirit that also plagued Cain, causing him to put an end to his brother in the very beginning of man's existence. In 1 Samuel 18, it reads, And Saul I David from that day forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played the harp with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, <laughs> for he said, I will smite David even to the wall <laughs> with him. And David avoided out of his presence two times. <laughs> and Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with David <laughs> and was departed from Saul. So to make a long story short, uh, David flees away from Saul and Saul is killed in a battle uh, with the army. And then uh, David becomes king after that. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, it reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, laughousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulsions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such of the like, of which tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So basically in this chapter, the apostle, which is probably the apostle Paul, because he wrote most of the New Testament, um, he's teaching us to identify wicked people by their fruits, which is also known as their actions. You know, actions speak louder than words. So you have to look at what they're doing. There's a lot of wicked people that can quote Bible scriptures and they talk about God and, you know, all this great stuff. But then you have to look at what fruit they're pro producing and you can see by their actions you know if they're really living the lifestyle that they're talking about in galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 26 it reads but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. These are not sin. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. If we live in spirit, let us also walk in spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another or envying one another. So again, this scripture is also saying that you can tell 
a righteous person by the fruit that they exhibit. You know, just like a tree grows fruit, an apple tree grows an apple fruit, an orange tree go, grows an orange fruit. So a wicked person produces wicked fruit and a righteous person produces righteous fruit. It is impossible to change the desires of a man's heart unless that man loves God. God can change a man's heart if the person desires it. So King David gave us an example of how to ask God to change our hearts. In Psalms 51, chap, uh, verses 2 through 11, it reads, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, I desireth truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from my presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So basically, uh, King David is praying that God would clean his heart and give him a right spirit and <laughs> not take away God's Holy Spirit from him. In the New Testament of the Holy Bible, Jesus taught the disciples how to cast out demonic spirits that affect the spiritual health of man's soul by prayer in Jesus' name. Today, demonic possession is often confused with mental illness and certain medical conditions that can alter a person's mental status, such as a genetic predisposition to mental illness, latent syphilis, substance abuse induced brain diseases, medication induced psychosis, including cannabis, traumatic brain injuries, emotional trauma induced mental conditions, liver disease, and other medical conditions that affect brain function. For the safety and humane treatment of your loved ones, always have them evaluated by a medical doctor to determine the appropriate treatment for their altered mental status and changes in their behavior pattern. For assistance with affordable health care insurance, go to www.healthcare.gov. For assistance with family counseling services, contact your local county and state health departments. Thank you for watching Biblical Demonic Possession.